Well, grace and peace to you all from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, our first hymn is, it's, it's one I've grown to love it. It's one of the newer ones, but I think it's a wonderful hymn. It's number 23 in Singing the Faith, if you want to do that. It's Jesus Calls Us Here to Meet Him. Come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Creator God, who has given us an earth full of beauty and bounty, we give you thanks for all our many blessings, for the warmth of the sun and for the rain that refreshes not only us but also the earth. We thank you too for the people with whom we share this earth and the relationships we have with many of them. Majestic and powerful God, we worship and adore you. Redeeming God, who came to this earth in Jesus Christ to, to show us how you want, to, want us to lead our lives, we praise you for your grace and goodness to us as we try to follow in his way. Help us to be prepared to live profoundly and to share generously with those who are in need. Majestic and powerful God, we worship and adore you. Empowering God, who comes to us in the Holy Spirit, 
but to open our heart, open our hearts and minds to the power which your spirit offers us. Help us never to be afraid when you prompt us to speak out against injustice and intolerance and fill us with your power to recognize and repudiate wrongdoing. However, it's a wrongdoing, however, is it wrapped up to hide it. Majestic and powerful God, we worship and adore you. Amen. And let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now, could we have, please, the, the uh, lesson from Galatians? The reading is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature and all of its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. We must also control our lives. He must also control our lives. Amen. Thank you very much. We're going to sing again. And we're going to sing one of Charles Wesley's greatest and most loved hymns. It's number 503 in Seeing the Faith, and it's, oh no, this is not the, it is, it is yes. Love divine, all loves excelling.
was a slightly abbreviated version, but none the worse for that. I'm doing something slightly different today. I've split the sermon up and we're going to sing a hymn between two bits of it, just because that's the way I feel it works. And I don't think you can call it a sermon, it's a reflection. The passage that Sylvia read from Galatians may sound very simple in some ways. And it sounds as though this is going to be a very easy sermon. But I do want us to think quite deeply about exactly what each of the fruits of the Spirit expects of us in our everyday lives. I don't expect you to give I don't expect to give you answers to the questions I shall ask. But I hope the questions will help us all to face up to the challenge set by St. Paul to the Galatians. So we'll start by thinking about the first three, love, joy, and peace. Words sound so nice, don't they? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self and, and self-control. Surely these are things which are not naturally part of the way that we lead our lives, aren't they? Are they really? We've just sung Wesley's great hymn. And that asks for the love of Christ to make its home in us. Do we really want that? The love of Christ was prepared to die an agonizing death on the cross for the sake of those who persecuted him. Do we really want to experience that kind of love? Or is what we want a sort of general benevolence, which is easy to feel and demands very little of us? What about joy? When was the last time, honestly, when you shared your joy with someone? Or even when was the last time when you felt true joy? Sometimes you may have to look quite hard to find joy, but it is one of the fruits of the spirit and it's always available to us if we look long and hard for it. It can be found in very simple things like the song of a thrush or the beauty of a summer's morning. But we must open ourselves up to it and be prepared to share it with others. And the third gift is peace. We can't do much to bring peace to warring nations, but we can help to make peace within our own communities. And this involves us in being there for people who are experiencing trouble or discord in their lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peace is not just the absence of war or dispute. It's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere of calm and restfulness, which we and those around us can find comfort and understanding. So I've thought about three of the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to sing again. And we're going to sing 372 from Hymns and Songs. Not Hymns and Songs, singing the thing. Come down, O love divine. One of my favourites.
I'm sure you all sound like fireballs. So let's look at the next three gifts which the Spirit offers us and by which we can be recognized as followers of Jesus Christ. They are patience, kindness, and goodness. And I have to admit that patience is possibly the gift which I find hardest. I am not a patient person. Jesus, though, was infinitely patient, <clears throat> both with the disciples who were sometimes very slow in the update, and also with those who came to him because they needed help. Just think of the woman who came and touched the hem of his garment. And he was on his way to the house of Jairus, whose daughter was dying. He made time for that woman, who was actually unclean according to the Jewish law. He made time for her, he healed her, and he kept Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, he kept him waiting. Do we always have patience with those around us when they want to share joy or sorrow or a trouble? Or do we dismiss them because they're too much trouble? Or because we haven't got time? Or simply because we can't be bothered? Kindness is of all the gifts of the Spirit, one we would all probably claim to be good at. And I have to say, that in this circuit, kindness is something I've experienced everywhere. But you know, kindness is more than looking after the people that you know and like. It's also about looking after the people you don't like or you find difficult. And then it's much more difficult for us. And it demands an awful lot of us and it demands so much that we need the help of the Holy Spirit to, exp to express it. Again, it's, it's like love, it sounds so simple, but kindness isn't simple, not always. None of the gifts of the Spirit is really simple. <laughs> and we come to the next one, which in my translation is goodness. Oh, goodness me, which of us can gain this gift? And yet we're called to achieve it. I think the only way we can do this is to follow closely the footsteps of our Lord. But it can be done. I've known some truly good people in my life, and I'm sure you have too. We have to try to emulate them and emulate Christ, who was indeed truly good. So we've done another three, so we come to another hymn. And it's 370 in Singing Faith. Breathe on me, breath of God.
So we come to the last three. And I think I sometimes think it gets more difficult as time goes on. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness can be a tricky one because there are so many ways of defining it. We can be faithful by keeping our promises. We can be faithful by being prepared to stick it to task when the going gets tough. We can be faithful by being full of faith and being prepared to share that faith with <laughs> other people. And I think this is what Paul was talking about. But sharing our faith doesn't mean pushing it in other people's faces, but rather sharing our faith by demonstrating it in our daily lives and relationships. Gentleness. This is not the word that was used in your translation, Sylvia. This is the one that was in mine. Are you gentle? Gentleness is a thing that can be misinterpreted, can be misinterpreted as weakness or sloppiness. But true gentleness is very far from being either of these things. True gentleness is to do with caring for people without judging them. And we're not always good at that. It also has a role in how we approach people. We Brit British people have many good points, but we have a tendency, haven't we, to be bracing rather than gentle, because we've got a great fear of showing emotions. And I think that's very true of British life. But if we're called to be gentle, and we are so called, then we have to be prepared to not to deal with not just our own but other people's emotion. And that's what it's about. So, self-control. You may think that to have the gift of self-control means that you don't have to share emotion. But I don't see it that way, and I don't think Paul did either. Self-control is about dealing with people fairly, even when you're sure they're wrong or stupid or stubborn. It's also about controlling our anger or our tendency to ridicule what we don't understand or consider unnecessary, consider just plain stupid. Self-control is, is not being buttoned up or standoffish or lacking emotion but rather about being able to look at another person's point of view fairly, even if it is different from our own. And to accept the fact that just occasionally, we might possibly be wrong. So we've had the last three, but you know, I think Paul left one out. Because I think that added to all those gifts, thankfulness is a gift of the Spirit. Thankfulness to God, of course, but also thankfulness to those around us who do little acts of kindness for us on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes it's hard to show gratitude. But that doesn't absolve us from the duty to express it and express it as though we meant it to, not just saying, oh, thanks. It doesn't mean anything. It's all too easy to mutter thank you as though the words are being dragged out of us. And, and that's not true thankfulness. I suppose if you look at the the gifts of the Spirit on the whole, they're not so much gifts, I suppose, as aims, things we have to work hard to achieve. However, we call ourselves Christians, follow the way of Jesus Christ, 
And so surely we long to open ourselves up to the Spirit so that her gifts may work in our lives and through them in our communities. I pray that this is so. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. Let's all pray. God of love and pity, we bring before you today those who are in our minds because of their needs. We know that you are aware of all our troubles, but bringing them to you helps us to recognize that you are involved in all the hurt, despair and danger that there is in this world. As we have over the past months, we pray for the people of Ukraine, beset as they are by fear, by sorrow, and sometimes we suspect by despair. Be very close to them, we pray. And where there is pain and grief, bring comfort and relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray also for our, or rather your, suffering planet. Bring together the minds and hearts of those in power, we pray, so that climate change and pollution may be halted and your world may be able to support all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for our families and friends, for the communities in which we live and work, and for those people whom we find it difficult to like. Lord, give us patience, understanding, and the ability to understand opinions and ideas which are different from our own. Open our hearts, Lord, so that we can learn to love as you love us with all our faults, and so that we can work effectively to help to bring in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a few minutes' silence, we bring our own worries and troubles and lay them at God's feet. The Lord hears our prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is joy. And I can think of no more joyful thing to do than to sing. So we're going to sing again, and we're going to sing Born in Song, number 26, and sing the faith.
And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us, upon all those we love, and upon all those we ought to love, this day and always. Amen. Amen.